Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. I uh, thank you for the gift of your presence, not only those of you here in person, but those of you who are joining us online. Thank you. We thank you for following the protocols by wearing your mask, keeping the social distancing. And I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing that appropriate opening hymn, Baptized in Water. gather together to celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord on this Sunday morning, let us pause a few moments, mindful of the gift of Jesus present among us and within us. Let us pray for the grace to be open to his presence, and together let us acknowledge our sin, seeking God's mercy to prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus once again in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you made your light shine on us by revealing yourself Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself and received baptism. Show us the way of humility. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your baptism, you cleansed us and made us children of your Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 
almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to people, a leader, a commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations you knew not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens and the rain and snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. God of glory thunders, 
and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified, testified on behalf of the Son. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. This is what he proclaimed One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. 
On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open, and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was on July 27th, 2014, right here in this church, at that baptismal font, I baptized my grandnephew, Anthony James Zabraki. I have a picture on my computer of that day with his family. My brother Pat came down for it. He's a priest in, in uh, Plentywood and Scobie and Medicine Lake. And together we flanked the family in that picture. Mark, the father, is holding his daughter, Mary Rose, and Macarena, the mother, is holding the newly baptized Anthony James. And I often look at that picture, and it brings a smile to my face. You know, it's interesting, there are theological and pastoral debates about the baptism of infants. Some are saying, how can Anthony, who is an infant, participate in this ritual? He sleeps more than any of us, and he'll not remember this event 15 years from now. Some might ask, well, shouldn't all the sacraments require a conscious level of participation? Others say, why not wait and let him be baptized as a teenager? Maybe when he's a teenager, he'll muster up enough strength to commit himself fully to Christ and his church. But the Catholic Church has baptized infants from its beginnings. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter baptized entire households of believers, which necessarily would include children. And there's something wonderful about a community of believers, family, and church gathering around a, a still embryonic person about his need for us and our passion and desire to attend and care for his well-being. You know, this type of baptism, infant baptism, is clearly about people in relationship about a child growing into that decision and faith. Although we are separate, individuals on different stages of the journey of life, it's always going to be Anthony and us. He will always be one of us. Anthony's infant state expressed his need for us. Vulnerable baby little boy little baby boy. And at the same time, it expressed his need for God. And while we look at Anthony, we see not only his need, but we see our need, our need for each other, and the reality that we are children ourselves in need of God. Spiritual traditions often speak of three eyes to look at life. On one level, you have the eye of the flesh, by which we see discrete objects. You could be looking at trees swaying in the wind, or a car moving down the road. We can see wrinkles appearing on our face. Well, if this vision gets blurry, we go see an eye doctor. We go see Dr. Sean Lebsock, and he'll Fix it with glasses so we can see more clearly. That's how you deal with that lack of vision. Secondly, there is the eye of the mind. We learn to think. It captures discrete objects into categories. And then you interrelate them. So we understand humans, different classes of plants, um, discrete um, categories. 
You understand the relationship between law and culture, and on and on and on. Okay, if you're going to strengthen the eye of the mind, what do you do? You go to school. You study. You begin to understand these correlations. And then we have what the spiritual mystics called the eye of the soul. Symbolically, this is located in the middle of the forehead. And um, it resonates with a deeper spirit, and that's the, the divine spirit. And this eye of the soul looks two ways. It peers into the eternal, but it's also into the temporal, into the things of life. And in this way, the eternal and the temporal the infinite and the finite, the transcendent and the imminent, are held together. Heaven and nature are singing, right? And if the eye of the soul goes blind, we lose our direction in our relationship with God, with the Spirit. We're not connected to the Spirit. So where do we go to get the eye of the soul opened? Hopefully, we go to a community of people who have the soul eye opened up. And when you, they bring themselves to the community of the church within the, the world of word and ritual, this closed eye of the soul can be opened. In order that Anthony's third eye be opened, our eye, our third eye, as a community of faith, must be opened. Richard Rohr refers to this third eye as having the mind of Christ. Only people awake to the Spirit can awaken the Spirit. Thus, we must time and time again in intentionally constitute ourselves as a Christian community before we can welcome someone within it. So what do we do during the baptismal rituals? Well, before I baptized Anthony, as I do all baptisms, we renew our baptismal commitment, right? And there's a double movement there to this renewal. There's a renunciation, and there's a commitment. We refuse Satan, his work, and his empty promises. We renounce the strategies of accusation and division, we renounce the ways of the world, pride, selfishness, power, and the passions of the world. And instead, we commit ourselves to the strategies of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is the revelation of God, who is God incarnate. And we enter into him by self-emptying, by forgiveness and reconciliation. We enter into the mysteries of Christ's life, as the revelation of our very own lives. And through the renewal of our baptismal promises, we have now purged ourselves and our sin, and we've opened ourselves to God's grace and love. In doing so, we've created a space for Anthony, which would be a space of embrace, blessing, and then sending forth. You know, one of the constraints or not one of the constraints, one of the constants of a Catholic or a sacramental spirituality is the steadfast refusal to allow the physical world to be its own reality. There's more to life than just what appears on the surface. We say that all the time as Catholics, right? We're... We believe in a sacramental reality, that God works through things. God works through people. And too often, people miss that deeper spiritual reality. And to be sure, the physical world has its own laws and operations, and it's valued as fundamentally good and respected for its internal workings. However, its ultimate grounding is spiritual. And the spiritual reveals itself through the physical. We as Catholics should be trained to have a detective's nose, 
tracing the physical clues to their deeper spiritual source. You know, as the water was poured and hit Anthony's skin and skull and continued to slide into the baptismal font, Catholic eyes looked at external signs of the pouring water and the baptismal formula, and they see a soul being awakened. He's moving into a deeper reality, a life in Christ, which is a life in the church when we surrender to it. There is a sacramental sensitivity and almost every aspect of our Catholic spiritual life nurtures that sensitivity. There's no end to it. After the pouring of the water, Anthony was anointed with the oils of the church. The prayer said that he would join Christ in the line of priest, prophet, and king. His parents were then given a candle, again an external sign. Its bright light reminded them that their child must be a child alive with the flame of Christ in his heart, and that they had a responsibility to keep that flame burning. He was clothed in a baptismal dress, a white one, believe it or not, one that I wore when I was baptized, signifying that he was a new creation in Christ, that he was clothed in his true essence as a child of God as a son of God. And so it will go throughout his Catholic life, the physical world symbolizing the deeper movements of the Holy Spirit. And if those moments are diminished or forgotten, or not practiced, it is very likely that Anthony will forget his deeper identity. It's very likely he will forget who he is as a son of God. I was able to see Anthony this Christmas. His parents, his family came up from Texas. He's grown and he's changed. He's now seven years old. He still makes me smile just as he did on the day of his baptism. And he is still that new creation. But what a responsibility, you know, as I looked at him. What a responsibility his parents have. What a responsibility his godparents have, his family has, the church has, in providing an environment so that Anthony can continue to grow as a child of God, as a disciple of God's Son, Jesus. What a responsibility you and I have as members of the body of Christ, as the church, and nurturing our children, our family, our church family, to continue to grow as members of the body of Christ. Together as God's people, let us now stand as we profess our common faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we were each anointed to share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Let us together lift our voices to our God, entrusting to him our needs and the needs of our world. For the church. May we who are baptized into the everlasting covenant embrace the world with faith and transform it by love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For areas of the world suffering due to drought and a lack of clean drinking water. May scientists and politicians come together to propose solutions and offer aid. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocesan Synod on Family, may we help each other grow in Christ and give witness to God's faithfulness in our words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may we live out our baptismal call to proclaim the gospel of God's love and the dignity of every human life from conception until natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Audrey Parks, Ron Jones, Carrie Wynn, Paul Lacey, Pat Byworth, Vern Boyer, Nick Gomez, Don Brokop, Joyce Viviano, Reed Hagen, and Mary Roberts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom God has called to eternal life, may they be established in God's kingdom of peace and rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Lorraine Hummel, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of everlasting glory, you have chosen us and loved us from before the creation of the world. And in Jesus Christ, who is wisdom incarnate, you have come to dwell in our very midst. May we welcome this mystery of your love and thus delight in the joy that will be ours as children and heirs of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our preparation song is Down to the River. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him, who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, 
you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Spirit and Grace.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We do have a few announcements. Um, this weekend we're featuring Rod and Pat V in our bulletin. Uh, they are greeters who often serve at the 8.30 a.m. Mass. Pat is... Our rod has been out since the pandemic, but Pat has still been here faithfully, so you'll want to check that out in our bulletin, either on paper or, in, or online. Our pivotal player study will resume on Tuesday at 9.45 in the Paris Center. Um, it'll be on Bishop Fulton Sheen. All are welcome to attend. Um, give Mary a call at the church office if you have any questions. Our youth ministry is collecting diapers and maternity baby items as well as monetary contributions for the V this month. Um, they hope to collect enough donations to sponsor a day's cost of operation there, which is about $900. They've always done that, so thank you again for your support there. Um, there is a sign-up sheet um, in the gathering space as well as outside the church office for you to sign up to be a cleaner here to deal with the sanitary challenges that we face, right? We need about four people, it takes about 15 minutes. Some of our faithful got tired of doing it every week, so they quit. So we said we better reschedule and try to get them to do it once every two weeks or maybe even once a month. So if you could sign up to help on that, possibly once or twice a month, sign up sheet is, um, is in the gathering space or outside the church office. It would take place after the 5 p.m. Mass as well as the 8.30 a.m. Mass. We'll have Brian do that um, on Monday morning following the 10.30 Mass, so we should be okay there. Okay, um, good weekend for football, huh? Does anybody care about the game Monday night? Does anybody know who's playing? No. Alabama and Ohio State. Is there any preference for Alabama? Anybody cheering for Ohio State? No. Do most people just don't care? <laughs> All right. Well, very good. I really don't care on that one either. All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing River of Glory.
Sunlight, lifting and leading our way. 